Hello, welcome back. I am glad you could join me today. I'm Kelsey Makes Things, and today we're going to talk about three big reasons why I think learning to code can feel so difficult and so intimidating sometimes. There are so many things I would have told myself in college that maybe would have prevented me from internalizing a lot of self-doubt and self-blame and general frustration. Before I get right into it, I just want to note that this video is supposed to encourage you, not discourage you from continuing to learn to code if you're doing that right now. And please watch until the end to see exactly what I mean. Cool, let's get into it. The first thing I wanted to talk about today, I call the activation energy roadblock. And I know that's a chemistry term, but just bear with me, please. So when I was first learning to code, I learned about variables, about conditionals, about loops, you know, all that jazz. And I was like, wow, this is so cool. Like, I love this logic, awesome. But at the same time, I had no idea how this stuff that we were doing in Eclipse could translate into a real world product. So then I tried to figure that out myself by working on personal projects. And I soon realized that there are a bunch of other frameworks and utilities that you need to know in addition to the core logical concepts of programming. A real life memory I have of this period of time was when I tried to install a C++ library, I think, through the command line. I had no clue how the command line really worked, so you can imagine what happened. There were just errors everywhere. I had no idea how to deal with them. I didn't know what they meant, and it was just so intimidating and scary to me. I was like, I'm not trying to write anything new. I'm just trying to install something, and it wasn't working out. Yeah in the beginning when everything was so new and unfamiliar and it seemed that other people had some unexplainable grasp on these concepts that i did not um it was really overwhelming and kind of isolating i wish i could reassure my past self that you will learn these things in time and it just took some patience in myself and another point about my mindset at the time is that i thought of these things i still had to learn as roadblocks like the activation energy to becoming a real programmer, but I realized that there is no such thing as a real programmer because programming is all about constantly learning and improving, and now I think of having to learn things as investing in my growth and investing in my knowledge. That's definitely a healthier mindset to have, and it also has a bright side in that, you know, you're always evolving, always growing, and you can feel that even as a software engineer now. Okay. On to the second reason why learning to code can feel so hard sometimes, and that is intellectual gatekeeping. I think we all know the stereotype of a programmer from the media. It's like that genius, but nerdy and maybe socially awkward white male. I think all of these descriptors of the stereotype are problematic, but let's just start with the genius part first. So there's this widespread idea that to learn to code or to become good at coding, you have to have this natural genius, like this natural technical intuition from birth. But that's so wrong because programming is literally like any other skill. You don't get good by being a genius. You get good by practicing and through years of experience. And in addition to just being straight up wrong, this idea also is very dangerous because if you're somebody who's starting to learn to code and you're not picking things up instantly like you think you should, then you start to doubt your own intelligence. Like with the command line example that I talked about earlier, like after a day of struggling, I was like, wow, this is really impossible for me. Maybe I just don't have that natural intuition for the command line that other people seem to have. And when you think that your potential as a software engineer is directly tied to some intrinsic understanding that you don't have, you start to feel discouraged and you want to quit. And this is especially true for underrepresented minorities in tech, because if you don't look like this, maybe instead of thinking the logical thing, which is let me work at this and maybe it'll get easier, you start to think, Maybe I'm just not innately cut out for this. Maybe I just don't have what it takes because I don't look like this. So yeah, I hate this image and the stereotype and all the intellectual gatekeeping that it kind of creates. Writing code is just like any other skill. Again, nobody naturally just knows it. Like everyone has to learn it. Okay, moving on to the third and last point of today, which is that there's never one right answer. When I first learned to code, I thought of the programs I was writing as either something that worked or something that didn't work. But then I got to college and then that was quickly debunked. 
I vividly remember my first assignment for my first CS class in college and it was a pretty long assignment so I stayed up all night working on it and I remember at like 4 a.m. everything finally starts working. The test cases pass and I'm like hallelujah I'm done. This is amazing. This is great. I turn it in and then obviously it comes back and it, it was not great. So that was the first time I was judged on my code style in addition to its functionality. And I just remember like my code had so many magic numbers and was decomposed really badly and had these obnoxiously long comments in them. <laughs> I'll put one up if I can find one. <laughs> and it was just not good. <laughs> that was when I realized in programming, there are usually a bunch of different ways to solve one given problem. And the hardest part lies in finding a good way. Since then, I've realized that because there are objective and subjective parts to coding, we should never take our own code personally. It's never a good idea to get too attached to any code that you write. And it's also good to keep an open mind about everything you write because it's going to evolve over time. This was kind of hard to grasp when I was just starting to code because I was like, oh my God, so many considerations in the thing that I'm writing. But it is really cool to think of writing code as an art in addition to a science because it would not be nearly as interesting if it weren't. <sighs> okay, that is it for this video, um, right as the sun is going down. If you are learning to code and struggling maybe or finding it hard, I hope that these three reasons can help you rationalize maybe why you're feeling that way. For me, if I'm struggling with something, it really helps me to know why I am struggling with it so that I can better tackle the problem. I think that being able to build things with code is like the closest thing to a superpower that someone can have. Well, <laughs> that's like super cliche and exaggerated, but that's kind of like my sentiment about it. So I hope that if you are learning to code that you continue. And I know that I talked about like kind of the universal struggles and like personal struggles that um, I faced, but there are also like really exciting moments and like super fun, awesome moments that maybe I'll leave for another video. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.